this video, we're going to cover glycogenesis or the synthesis of glycogen. So by the end of this video, you'll understand the significance of glycogenesis, why and when it occurs, what's required, and the whole process. Now, before we break down how glycogen is synthesized, let's first discuss this polymer of glucose here and its structure. Glycogen is a polymer of glucose that is highly branched. So how are they linked? These glucose molecules are linked via alpha-1,4 linkages, glycosidic bonds in a linear form. And the branches are linked via alpha-1,6 linkages. And this occurs every 12 to 14 glucose molecules. The numbers 1 to 4 and 1 to 6, that's referring to the carbon number of the two units that are joined together. So when does glycogenesis occur? So glycogen is formed when there is excess energy, excess glucose, when there is high blood glucose levels. This is after a meal, so post-absorptive state. And glycogen synthesis occurs in the liver and skeletal muscle. Now that we've covered what glycogen is and its structure, let's subtract complexity by going over how glycogen is synthesized. Glycogenesis has multiple steps and requires enzymes and metabolic intermediates. Let's start with glucose, and this glucose is going to be converted to glucose 6-phosphate. So we're adding a phosphate group onto that 6-carbon. And this is done by hexokinase 1 and 2 in muscle and hexokinase 4, known as glucokinase in liver. Glucose 6-phosphate is the starting molecule of glycogenesis. You'll hear glucose 6-phosphate a lot in metabolism. It's very popular. It gets around. It can enter glycolysis or be converted to free glucose in the liver. In this reaction, we require ATP. So from glucose 6-phosphate, it's then converted to glucose 1-phosphate. This is a phosphoglucomutase reaction and it's reversible. Now that we've produced glucose 1-phosphate, before we can actually move on to synthesizing glycogen, we first need to activate this glucose molecule. And we activate it by adding uridine triphosphate or UTP so that we can form the sugar nucleotide UDP glucose. Now, a lot of polymerization reactions that form disaccharides, glycogen, starch, and other polysaccharides involve sugar nucleotides. So glucose 1-phosphate is converted to UDP glucose, and this is done by UDP glucose pyrophosphorylase. Now that we have activated the glucose by forming the sugar nucleotide UDP glucose, UDP glucose is the glucose residue donor to the growing molecule, catalyzed by glycogen synthase. So glycogen synthase is the enzyme that elongates the chain, adding new glucose residues. However, glycogen synthase can't actually initiate or kickstart glycogenesis. Glycogen synthase first requires a primer of approximately 8 glucose residues. So then, if that's the case, how is glycogen initiated. A protein called glycogenin is both the primer and the enzyme that catalyzes the first eight reactions of the new chain. So to initiate the synthesis of glycogen, glucose residue from UDP glucose is transferred to the hydroxyl group of glycogenin, and this is catalyzed by glycogenin's glycosyl transferase activity. And it's going to repeat this process about seven to eight times adding glucose residue from UDP glucose. This is an autocatalytic process. So what's happening is we're adding a glucose residue from UDP glucose and removing UDP in the process. And then we add another UDP glucose and remove UDP. And when enough residues have been added, glycogen synthase takes over and elongates the chain. But before we move on to glycogen synthase and what it does, let's first review and summarize how glycogenin primes this process. Actually, let's start from the start. Let's summarize what we've just covered. So we started off with glucose. Glucose is converted to glucose 6-phosphate by hexokinase. So we're adding a phosphate group onto that 6-carbon. And glucose 6-phosphate becomes glucose 1-phosphate. From glucose 1-phosphate, we need to activate the sugar before we can move forward. So we do this by adding uridine triphosphate, or UTP. And then we create UDP glucose. So now that we've created UDP glucose, UDP glucose is the glucose residue donor. So we add UDP glucose to glycogenin and remove UDP in the process. And we're going to keep doing this at least seven to eight times. And once we've done this, once we've initiated the process, 
glycogen synthase can now take over. Okay, so what does glycogen synthase do? Glycogen synthase will transfer the glucose to the glycogen chain to make a new alpha-1-4 linkage. So now we have elongated glycogen with M plus 1 residues. However, glycogen synthase can't make the alpha-1-6 bonds where the branching occurs. So that is catalyzed by the glycogen branching enzyme, also called glycosyl transferase. The reason why branching occurs is to increase the number of the reducing ends of the chain and also to make glycogen more soluble. So the glycogen branching enzyme catalyzes the transfer of glucose residues, about seven residues from the non-reducing end and transfers it to C6 hydroxyl group of a glucose residue and we have created a new branch. So glycogen synthase transfers the glucose to the glycogen chain, but because it can't make the alpha-1-6 bonds where the branching occurs, the glycogen branching enzyme comes in and transfers glucose residues to a new end. Okay, before we end this lecture, let's quickly recap everything that we've just covered. So we started off with glucose. Glucose is converted to glucose 6-phosphate by hexokinase, so we're adding a 6 carbon so we're adding a phosphate group onto that 6 carbon. Glucose 6-phosphate is the starting material or starting molecule of glycogenesis. From glucose 6-phosphate, we convert that to glucose 1-phosphate. But before we move on to glycogen synthesis, we need to activate the sugar. And we do this by adding UTP, uridine triphosphate, and we produce UDP glucose. And UDP glucose is the glucose residue donor to the growing chain. The enzyme glycogen synthase is the enzyme that elongates the chain, so adding new glucose residues, but it can't actually kickstart glycogenesis. So then glycogen synthase requires a primer, and that is where glycogenin, a protein that is both the primer and the enzyme, that catalyzes the first eight reactions of the new chain, so kickstarting it. And so to kickstart it, we add a glucose residue from UDP glucose and removing UDP in the process. And then we add another UDP glucose and remove UDP. And we do this seven to eight times. And once we've initiated this, glycogen synthase can then take over. And glycogen synthase transfers the glucose to the glycogen chain to make a new alpha-1-4 linkage. And so we've elongated glycogen with M plus 1 residues. But glycogen synthase can't make the alpha-1-6 bonds where the branching occurs. So the glycogen branching enzyme comes in and transfers glucose residues to the 6-carbon hydroxyl group of a glucose residue. So that is glycogenesis. In this lecture, we learned that glycogen is an animal polysaccharide that is found in liver and skeletal muscle, and it's formed when there is excess glucose. We broke down how glycogen is synthesized by first activating the sugar molecule by adding uridine triphosphate, and how UDP glucose is the glucose residue donor of the growing chain. We also covered how glycogen synthase makes new alpha-1-4 linkages, and how the branching enzymes creates the alpha-1-6 linkages. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to EKG Science so you don't miss a single lecture. And remember, subtract complexity and slow down. To study the next lecture, simply click the next video or you can view the entire metabolism playlist. Hey, stop procrastinating.